Okay, so in this uh, first session uh, with Paul right here, I'm gonna. Um, he, he wants to start playing the cello, right? Uh, so I'm gonna demonstrate today a little bit of how do I uh, achieve a, a good setup for a first timer, uh, both in the cello and, and the bow. So basically, what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna give Paul the cello, right? I'm gonna first ask him uh, to be seated a little bit on the edge of the seat, right? And yeah, that's perfect. I'm trying to have uh, his legs right uh, in this angle. And with the both uh, soles of the, of, the, of the feet on the floor, right? Um, so one of the things that I first do to get a good setup, because this is always a, a problem that people have, like adjusting the, the height of the end pin. It's actually quite simple. One thing that I could do is just give the child pole a little bit like this. Just you can do like a little bit of this. And then ask him to hold it there, right? And while he does that, I just let the end roll a little bit. And I think that uh, helps him to have like a proper setup. He actually looks very well. As you can see, he doesn't seem that he is like uncomfortable on his shoulders. Uh, you can see that the cell is well placed between his legs. And you don't have to go trying like uh, the height of the amp in like time and time again to see what works or what doesn't. So I think this is a very quick and easy way to achieve that a proper setup for a first timer in terms of the amping. So, um, one thing that I'm gonna um, show Paul what, how to do, it's just let me fix this strap so he can be completely comfortable. How do you feel there? Good. Good? Yeah. Okay, so you actually look very good. Yeah, generally when, when a person has a child for the first time they look like awkward and because they have a strange body between their legs, so it's only normal. So, there's one thing that is very important from the beginning, is that in the left hand, there's this sense of natural shape, right? Or hand generally is just like this, right? And people generally, when they try to play, they just put it like this, or like this, or, I don't know, they do strange cha uh, shapes that don't match what you have to accomplish. So a simple thing to do is just relax, like left your leave your hand hanging and then just as it is just send it here right and try to have this area like straight have this like this like in a natural way because our, our arm is not uh, sorry forearm is not like this it's just like all the, the natural uh, shape of it is this one so try to have that so if you try if you want, you might want to take this jacket off actually. It will help a little bit. Perfect. Yeah. So if you want, for example, right there, try to achieve um, a position where that's way, way better, right? So the idea is that this finger, the index finger, and the thumb are together, like in a parallel way here, right? So have them in that shape that you have now. And remember all the time, not trying not to allow your your wrist to work like this, but just complete like the natural shape of the of the forearm. Right? So one thing that we're gonna try to keep that shape because when, when I will ask him to press the strings, generally there's tension. So one very simple thing that I will tell him is to go and Block the string like this. Can you try that? And try before you continue. Can you try having your tongue like this under the? Yes, it looks very well. Yes. So now we're going to try doing that in the area that should be first position, 
right, which is here, to give him an idea. Can you try once? Yeah, good. So one thing that he can do to start developing the movement on the fingers is he could try going from string to string. So he could try doing it like one, and the, n the number, name numbers for the fingers would be like finger number one, number two, number three, and number four. So he, will, he could try making up his own combinations, like not only playing one, two, three, and four, but playing one and three, two and four, uh, one, four, two, three, or whatever comes up to the mind. So that could be something that you could try. You want to try that? Yeah, if you want to try it, I'll sing it, okay? Yeah, so one thing that we have to take advantage is that the shape of the, of the arm is going to change in the, in, a, in the measure that we're changing to the lower strings. When we have the A string, we can have this here, you see it's very natural, whereas you're going to the C string, there's a movement, it's kind of like a balance that you achieve with your whole arm, it moves, it's not, if you try to reach it just with your hand, then you get this breaking of the wrist here, that is not, it doesn't work very well, and it actually creates tension in, in the long run problems. So, one thing that now you can try is, now, now that we have an idea in the air where first position is, we're gonna try from the from the get go, from the beginning, try to know a little bit more of the fingerboard. So one thing that he could try now is block one, two, three, and four. Can you try that on A string? Yeah. And as he does that, when he finishes on four, he can take his whole arm and go down to here up to where his thumb is stopped by the body of the instrument and he can pluck again and in that area that he is plucking that four position so he could from the beginning start doing position changes from the instrument just with this exercise not without pressing any strings just the position in the air to give him an idea to his muscles and to his brain and what he has to do so that's an interesting idea that he can try, he can try with any combinations that he wants. He can go one, two, three, and four, and go down, sorry, up on the fingerboard, and then plug two, four, one, three, and go back, uh, three, two, one, four, or whatever he wants to do. That's something that is an exercise that he can take home, and with his creativity, he can develop a conscious, a consciousness, consciousness about this uh, space relationship. Um, let's see. So one thing that I notice, and it happens a lot, when he is plucking here, instead of staying in the same spot, we we kind of instead of staying here plucking in a parallel way, they kind of start going. They leave the tone behind, and the fingers start moving forward. So that's one thing that we have to limit, right? So. If you can try it one more time, thinking on that, thinking of keeping your fingers in the same space that you have them now, yes, that is perfect. Actually, if you want to give it a tripod and look yourself in the mirror, right behind the camera we have a mirror where you can check his position, can you try it? Can you go back? Yeah. And now, can you try lifting your, yes, your elbow a little bit. Yeah, that looks very good. So remember all the time trying to have this uh, natural shape of your wrist, never allowing your, your wrist break from your forearm, right? So that's a very good idea that you can use to start working on the left hand, right? And it's also a plus if the student from the beginning starts avoiding not to look at the hands so he can develop just like consciousness of it without depending on their eyes 
So in the long run, they don't start um, listening with their eyes, which is something that even cellists that have been playing for years and years still have. So that's a habit that sets you free as a performer. So it's a good idea to develop it from the beginning. Uh, okay, so now a little bit more on the left, on the right hand, we can press the. Is the setup of the bow. This is always a tricky one because the bow has to be as natural as you can, right? Your arm, your your hand is like this, and you just have to put the bow here. But we have a, a tendency that we think that we have to make an effort. That we have to, uh, you have to uh, put some strength on it to hold it in the air. And what that accomplishes is positions like this, where you get tension here and you're not getting enough weight. You're not getting all the weight on the, of the arm right on the string. So, as the bow itself is heavy, what we need to try to do is try to make it lighter. And a way, where, a way where that we can make it lighter is going to the to the balance point of the, <clears throat> of the stick, right? Here, you don't have to deal with the throw, which is probably the heaviest part of the bow, and you will ha have to adjust with a little bit of the instrument. So just for uh, to try to give him an idea, I'm gonna ask you Paul to hold the bow just from here. Just, here. yeah, just grab it, right? So from there, there's weight, and it's not like extremely heavy, but it's not as comfortable as it would be if you grab it from here, right? There's much, much more lightness, right? It's much, much more light. So it can be easier for a person that is just starting uh, to deal this way with the weight of the bow and the way that the arm has to do when they perform, right? So that's a very interesting way of seeing it. So now, the tricky part, how do you get them to have a natural position on their, on their hands, right? It's quite simple, actually. <clears throat> you ask the student to please extend their hand like this, right? So if you can, yeah. So now we take the bow with the frog in this direction, right? And we go, we ask them to open the fingers a little bit, right? And we go to the middle fingers, to the two middle fingers, and we look for this division on the finger, right? For this first division of the, of the finger, I think phalange is that word? Yeah, no. digit. Yeah, right, here in the, in this line, in the digit part of the finger. So what we do is we take the wood stick and we place it here, crossing those lines, right? So in those two fingers, now what we do is we tell him to gently put his other fingers on it and now take the thumb and send it to the middle of these two fingers like this and now not asking him to twist his wrist to take his whole arm like this and they will have a setup and it looks very natural, and you can see that his shoulder is in position, is not up, is not, there's, do you feel any tension now? He's really relaxed, right? So this, dealing with this setup, having this setup, it actually looks very good right now. Dealing with this setup for, in this position, in this part of the ball for a couple of weeks, it's very good, right? It's very helpful because that gives him an idea of how he has to grab the ball, how much is the weight that the arm has to do. And after a while, when he's more acquainted with this, the only thing that we do is just gently with lighting to this part of the bow, right? Right now, there will be a little bit more tension, but it still is a very good shape of the arm, of the hand. The grabbing of the bow is really, really good. So I think that's a very interesting idea that he can do. Now, as a last thing for a first lesson, because in a first lesson it's not a very good idea to overwhelm the student and just like give him like a thousand pieces of knowledge, you will be like giving like three good things that he can just like grind on them for the next lesson and then we can have a start on something. Um, you'll be a little bit of, can, can we go again to the balance point? Yeah. Uh, give
give him um, a little bit of exercise. We already gave him exercise for the left hand on the string, on the strings. Now trying to give him a little bit of exercise for the right hand on the strings with the bow. So one thing that he can try is now. Can can you hold it? Yeah. Now, just not press, but just let your arm have its weight there and go. And try to go in a way that not only your forearm is moving, but your whole arm. Like, that your movement is going from here, from behind. Right, that's way better. Because when you do that, the bow holds a parallel direction. It doesn't go like in diagonal. It doesn't go like all over the place. And, and that, if you do that, excuse me, Paul. If you do that, you will get this like really superficial, like kind of not very well-pressed sound, right? Whereas if you do it with your whole arm, it will get a more straight-up sound, right? Which is what we're looking for from the beginning, right? It's very important to have these things clear from the get-go because uh, something, if it's something goes wrong from the beginning, it will carry, it will give him problems in the future that he will carry who knows for how long until uh, uh, some kind of a strategy is taken to like solve these problems. So it's better uh, for a first um, for a first starter to give him like solid foundations from the beginning. Um, so now, can you try that on G string? The G string is this one. Can you play that? Now, to play the C string, the only thing that you have to do is you have to lower here and go. Same idea with the arm. You see that good that sound is there? Feels better. So now you're gonna play C, uh, G again. You just go up a little bit. And then if you wanna go up to D, then you just lift your... Yes, exactly. And then here is where it's get, it gets tricky because the A string generally carries this problem. Can you try playing the A string with the same idea? Yes, that is very good because generally when people go to the A string they tend to get, a, uh, get the shoulder up too much and that uh, brings a problem later which is a really 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 uh, big pain here uh, right next to the shoulder plate in the muscle right here. So it's a very good idea to have everything as relaxed and as natural as is possible from the beginning. Can you try now playing uh, G on D strings? And you can play G now. So, do, do you have any questions now, Paul? At all? No? You think you feel mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. One thing that, that one has to have into uh, one has to take into account is the lessons. The way um, you teach a lesson to to a student, it depends a lot also in the age. Uh, now I'm talking a lot and explaining a lot of things uh, with purposes for the video, um, because Paul is an adult now and he can process all this information. But for a kid, for example. Talking too much is, is a bad idea. They get distracted, they get bored, basically. So a kid is more, with a kid is more a process of demonstration of, hey, do this, have your arm shape like this, just, but not explaining, okay, you have to do this because your arm is gonna get tired or something, that's something that has to be avoided, right? Another thing that I think that is really important in a lesson is the eliminate completely negative things like okay you can't or don't do that or no or that's wrong no thing properly the, th the things that are properly said for a lesson will be things like okay uh, how can we do this better uh let's improve this things like that uh, those seem as simple things right but they are really really important because uh, when you perform it's a matter of everything is your body moving is your mind processing your finger, your muscle, and your fingers muscle are working like super hard. 
So yeah, you have to be very careful with what you say to the student because uh, that might affect them too. So it's a very thing, it's a very delicate thing that you have to have in mind. Um, I think the most important thing basically is after a while, even even though all the students generally can start with this kind of setup, in the long run, uh, seeing the process that the student has and the diff even the difficulties or advantages that he has, um, the teacher has to set himself up to that, like accommodate himself up to that and see what is this, what the student needs and try to cater those needs so he can have a good process as a cello starter, as a cellist. Uh, so I think that's everything for today and thank you. <clears throat>